up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to yet another new month. We're almost at the middle of the year. God has been so faithful. And we've been learning through this series about no offense. And so we're going to continue on the, through this month. So you ain't ready for what God has in store for you. Before we get to that, let's sing some songs in praise and honor to our God. Come on, let's go. Come on, wherever you are, just put your hands together like this. Come on, hey. your hands together. Yeah. Huh. Come on. <laughs> come on. Let's go like this. Everybody come on. Hey. We are the salt of the earth. We carry the favor of God all over the world. Come on. Hey. Season 
presence. Indeed, you amaze us with your goodness. You amaze us with your love. We can never find a God like you. In you we live, we move and have our beings. And Lord, we, we've just gathered this morning, really have come before you to say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us your own. And Lord, because of your love, your love that compelled you to send your son to down the cross for our sins, we've been redeemed and we're no longer slaves. Your word reminds us that where the presence of the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so we declare freedom this morning, freedom from bondages of, of, of addictions, of depression. We declare freedom of our lives, of every single thing that we have done that has just drawn us further and further away from you. Come and make our lives your home, our hearts your dwelling place. Because we are no longer slaves to fear. We are indeed children of God. We have an identity with you, Lord. With a melody. Yes, Lord. You surround me with her song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God
that are chasing you. Your identity is not even determined by your skin color or your tribe. Your identity is not determined by what people think about you. Your identity is determined by the fact that you are a child of God. Lord, thank you because you made an image and likeness of you. And so Lord, even as we proceed on with this service, may you remind us where we belong, that indeed we are placed in the right place right in your arms that we are children of God and nothing can ever separate us from your love may you be glorified and may you be exalted in Jesus name we have worshipped and everybody say amen. amen and amen amen you know what child of God enjoy the rest of the service God has so much in store for you so you you better get ready <laughs> you better get ready because you're about to get to a new level of grace God bless you so much. See you next time. Hey, Mabuno, how are you doing? This is uh, Pastor Maridi Wanjao, Pastor M, your senior pastor. And I am so, so grateful today uh, in our time of worship that we can just worship God. But hey, I want to just uh, bring a, a special announcement to you right now. If you've been part of Mabuno, you know that the thing we are very excited about right now in this uh, time is the Fearless Summit. And the Fearless Summit, uh, for those of you who are new to Mabuno, it's a time when church and marketplace leaders come together to talk about how to change the world for God's kingdom. Uh, it's a time when every single one of us talks about the place where we work, the place where God has assigned us. How do we become an agent for the sake of the reason God placed us there? And so this year, the Fearless Summit, it's happening uh, on July 9th, uh, the 7th to the 10th. And it's going to be so exciting. I'm really looking forward. There's a great array of speakers uh, that are going to be there. But in addition, it's just going to be a time when we get deep uh, and start really looking uh, into a clear strategies for how we can actually engage with our society. And I want you to be there. I don't want you to miss it. And so right now, you need to understand that there's a special bird offer going on, early bird offer going on. It's actually $30, and it's a special early bird offer. The price is going to go up soon. We want to make sure that as many of you are able to get on. Uh, right now, already, there's several hundred people who've already signed on with the earlier early bird offer that was even better than the one right now. But it's going to go up. And so we want to make sure none of you misses. Also, I just want to say a very special thing. If you would like to showcase your business, we're expecting quite a lot of people uh, from different countries to be here, but also people from our, our, uh, your area. And so if you'd like to showcase your business, uh, take a stall there uh, and, and just tell Mavuno, uh, tell the world what it is that you're doing. Uh, show us uh, some of that and maybe get people, get new clients among your community. Uh, all you need to do is just go on our website, info at uh, fearlesssummit.org that's, that's actually the email or go to www.fearlesssummit.org and you'll be able to get all the information you need uh, to be able to uh, sign up for that but hey uh, please go online if you can and reserve your slot for Fearless 2022 my name is Moridi Wanjao see you at Fearless Greetings, good people. Welcome to our online service from wherever you are. I'm so glad that you get to join us. My name is Angela Kimaru, and I'm excited to be bringing God's word to you this month. And so we're kicking off. We'll go continue with our series that we started last month called No Offense, talking about how to deal with offense, which has become a stronghold in our culture today. Man, this series has been amazing. Pastor M laid down some truths. It was an amazing series. We're basing it off a book called, by John Bevere called Bait of Satan. 
So coming into this series, I felt like I didn't have any offense. I'm good. I'm going to pray for people. I'm going to preach the word of God in my campus. It's going to be amazing and lit. Let me tell you guys, this message has hit home and awakened things in me that I didn't know I hadn't dealt with. And I'm excited because I've seen breakthrough. Last week's prayers were so good, so sweet. I loved it. If you missed it, kindly check out the Mavuna Church uh, YouTube page and catch up with where we are. So today we're going to talk about offense in the church. It's going to get real. The church is the perfect place for offense to happen. It's an institution that's established by a perfect God, but then it's led by broken people. Um, and so it's a perfect place for offense to take place. It doesn't help that the world that we live in today is a consumer society. So we are conditioned uh, by the world, by the principles of consumer society to, to live by them. So we live in a world full of options. The other day I went to buy rice in the supermarket and uh, to tell you the truth, the thing that perplexes me when I get in is that there's a whole aisle dedicated to rice. There are different types, there are different uses, long grain, short grain, different colored, scented, partly boiled. There are different options. It's just too much information. So when the brand that I liked was not in the aisle, uh, I was perplexed and confused. I had to call for help so the guy can tell me what, what do I like. And it took some months for me to try one. I got rid of it. Then I saw an advert in the, on telly and I'm telling you I was sold. I went and bought the other one. I switched brands without any feelings, without any emotion. And sometimes that's how we per, our perception when it comes to church. Let me be clear, there are some positive things about the consumer society. It has affected or, you know, cause it has positively benefited us as the church in how we present the gospel, how we speak to this generation. But on the flip side, it has affected our perceptions of the church. Now, when we begin to see ourselves as consumers or clients in the church, then it reduces the spiritual work of the gospel, which has power to change lives. Uh, but we miss out on it when we begin to see our church as a product. The gospel is a living idea, people. It's not a manufactured product. When church becomes a product, when we minimize it to become a product, we limit the impact of the gospel to speak, not just to specific areas of our lives, but to all of it. Now, because church is led by broken people, it's the perfect breeding ground for offense to happen. As a result, men and women leave church. Uh, uh, you know, in, at the moment, they see something wrong in the leadership. They get offended by someone who said something to them, to them or hurt them in the church. And you, know, you start moving to churches where there appears to be no conflict. We go from place to place looking for the perfect pastor. Let me tell you, there is no perfect pastor. In fact, when you leave issues um, you know, undealt with, you end up going to churches bitter and offended, or you end up serving bitter and resentful in the place that you are. Now, I don't want to reduce what experience you've been through. I don't want to reduce the pain you went through at the hands of a leader in a church. I acknowledge that you know, there are many situations that have caused us offense. There are corrupt leaders in the church. But the question is, what do we do? How do we posture ourselves? Because church is part of God's plan. So I want to share two points to today, but I'm going to share uh, two stories that I hope will lead us into the points I want to make. The first story is found in the, in the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel. There is a priest called Eli. And this guy was such a corrupt guy. He had two sons who were extremely corrupt. They, they manipulated offerings. They took offerings by manipulation and force for people who had come to offer their sacrifices to God. These guys had sex with women who had come to church, at the, assembled at the door of the tabernacle. They manipulated them. He was a minister who was so insensitive to the things of the Holy Spirit that when a woman had come and she was praying to God, she was in the throne of prayer, he accused her of being drunk. This is Hannah. We all know this story. She came to church desperate for God to answer her prayer, to give her a child. And then this priest accuses her of being drunk. Talk about an opportunity to be offended. If it was me, let me just say, how I'd have responded is that I'd have left the church. I'd not have let him talk. I'd have left the church going, telling people that church has drama. I'd have exposed that church on social media everywhere. I'm like, who are you to judge me? And your children are doing this. This is happening in the church. Many Christians would have done this. But let me tell you this woman, she's amazing. <clears throat> 
the man of God, she didn't lose focus. They ended up having a conversation and she tells the guy, I'm not drunk. I'm like, you even had a conversation? I'm desperate for God to move. I'm trusting God for a child. And then the man of God says, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant you what you have had him. I'm like, alas, she even took the word and ran with it. And the next year, she had a child. I'm like, this woman did no focus. She's amazing. And then one year later, what happens is because she had made a covenant with God, not with a man. She brings her firstborn son to serve under him. Her first child to serve under the man who accused her of being drunk, to serve under the man who his children were sleeping with people uh, in the city, to serve under the man who was, uh, manipul people were manipulating the, the offerings, the tithe that was given in the church. She sent her son to serve under him. I'm like, what happened? What is it that happened in her? What caused her to still tr run with the word that this man gave her and to still give her child to serve under him? This is my first point, kingdom perspective. You need to pray for kingdom perspective. The previous sermon that Pastor M shared last month that was deep, one of the favorite lines he said is, no man, no human, no demon can ever get you out of the will of God. Only God holds your destiny. Like you guys, you need to know this in your soul. You need to believe it in your bones that no human, no demon can ever get you out of the will of God. Listen, Hannah made a covenant with God. And then when this man gave the word, she still ran with the word because no human can get you out of the will of God. Now, I'm not saying anything new. We've, we've had this, in fact, in the second Psalm, we say, let God contend for you. I don't know why God allowed you to remain under that uh, leader. I don't know why God has allowed that leader to remain in that position, but this is what I know. What I know is that the Lord contends for us. I'm talking to you who has served in Mavuno before as a Mizizi facilitator. I'm talking to you who was a kid's pastor and is now hurt. I'm talking to you who was an usher or a service host and you're now sitting back in the pews. I'm talking to you who was hurt by a leader in this church. This is what I know. God always takes care of his people. He takes care of his church. He takes care of his sheep. Eli the priest and his sons died at the hand of God. May God help you know today that he left the 99 for the one that strayed. And this is God speaking to you now, directly saying, I want you, I want you back. The moment we realize that God the Father loves us, he's talking about a leadership, he picks a child and he says, I want you in my kingdom, then you will settle in your church. This is what God does. There's a moment I call the Godfather moment that settles me and settles my spirit. I call it the Godfather moment because Jesus was, was sitting down with his boys. Then there's a little child that comes and they're having a conversation about who's the greatest in the kingdom. And then he picks up this child, puts a child on his lap and he says, those of you who become like this child, those of you who approach me like this child, the kingdom of God is yours. And then he says this to them as the child is on his lap. In my mind, he's patting the lap and I call the child this moment, the Godfather moment, because this is what he says in Matthew 18, six to 19. He says, if anyone causes any one of my little ones to, uh, any one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large milestone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. In the end, I finish with capish. Because this was a threat. It's a Godfather moment. God is issuing a threat and saying, if you hurt my sheep, if you cause my sheep to stumble, this, it is worse for you. It is better you tie this thing around your neck and throw yourself, lest I come after you the creator of the heavens and the earth. Me, this causes me to shiver as a pastor. <laughs> I'm like, hey, may I be careful in handling his sheep. And I wanna tell you as a child of God, one of my good friends, Pastor Sam Waka says, don't panic, God has got you. I wanna tell you today, God has got you. He will deal with those who stumble you. David came out of being under Saul. Samuel came out of being under Eli. He was one of the greatest prophets that led in our time, but he served under Eli. No human, no demon can get you out of the will of God. Now let me say to those that lead, take care of the sheep. If you are a parent, 
take care of the sheep. If you're a teacher in Mavuno Kids, if you're a facilitator, Mrs. into a layer, if you are DG leader, don't cause offense. Watch your tongue, watch your behavior. This is what it continues to say in verse eight of that same scripture. It says, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Listen, God is serious about his sheep. He is serious about you. He loves you beyond, beyond what you think uh, or imagine. He sent his only son for his sheep. My first point, pray for kingdom perspective. Once you have this perspective, you settle. Because no human, no demon can come in the way of what God has planned for you. Ask yourself, why have you allowed this leader to be in my midst? Because nothing can stand in the way of what you have called me to be. David, the greatest king of Israel, came out of being under Saul. Eli, one of the biggest prophets, came out of being under Eli. They did not contend for themselves. The second story that I want to share with you, the second perspective, I want to share it with a story in mind. So when I started college, you guys, um, many years back, it was such a difficult time for me. I was studying biblical and religious studies at the Daystar University. I'm a serious child. I'm telling you. Now, you know what happened is from an early age, I had had the call. I knew that I was going to do a work in, work in serving the Lord. Uh, I served as a service host at, as host at the time in my young age at my local church. I was part of a dance group, I'm telling you, known as TTJ, Toire J Sahala. But I'm telling you, that's a story for another day. But anyway, so I was serving in my church. I love the Lord. We used to be called to different churches around the city to help uh, in choreographing dances for them and concerts. But then I had this call. I knew I'm going to serve the Lord. So I decided to go and study at uh, Desta University uh, where I, I studied. And so a pastor friend of mine called me. His name is Pastor Fred. He called me for lunch and he tells me, I'm so excited you're doing this course. Would you consider coming to serve in my church? I'm telling you, something in me came out. And anger, righteous anger came out and I told him, there's no way I'm ever going to serve in the church. I'm telling you, I had some strong feelings towards the church. I didn't even know that I had, it, I had these feelings towards the institution that is church. I didn't know I was carrying offense. Not that they did something to me personally, but it's something, there was something about me that perceived the church to be a certain way and there was no way I was going to serve under the church. In fact, I felt at that moment when he said it that I was facing some sort of crisis. I mean, I love the Lord. I want to give my life to him. I'm studying, I'm setting my career to serve him, but I want nothing to do with this church. Don't ask me, Lord, to serve you in the church. That was my line. So honestly, I felt, uh, in, when I was talking to him, I felt the church was not authentic. I felt the church had a, left a lot of people abandoned to their pain. I loved God. I loved the course I was doing, but I felt that the church was just another man-made institution made to frustrate men. I felt that there were just too many things in church that were not uh, aligned. I felt there was too much politics. There was gossip, questionable leadership. I was frustrated and I didn't want anything to do with the church. Now, let me tell you, Pastor Fred was shocked when I talked to him aggressively. The way I responded was so aggressive. Let me tell you, at some point he looked at me confused, but as I continued to talk, his whole face, his whole demeanor changed. And then he said, looking at me with compassion. Do you know those guys who lean in? They, are, they look at you with such compassion and love. I was confused. So now I'm looking everywhere, dodging his eyes. I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? I'm just telling him how I hate where he works. And then the guy leans in and tells me something that I want you guys to hear today. He says, Angie, Maybe you need to stop going to church. I'm like, what? He's like, God's highest calling for you as a follower of Christ was never to go to some building called church. God's highest calling for you was never to be conformed, was, was for you was to be conformed to the image of Christ, but not to go to church. He wants you to be planted in the house of God, to be the church, a light shining to the world. Guys, I want to repeat this for you. I want you guys to hear what I'm saying. God's highest calling for you was never to go to church. God is calling you to be planted in the house of God, rooted in Christ and flourish as part of the church. He's not calling you to some building. He's calling you to be conformed to the image of Christ. 
listen guys, uh, immediately I left campus, immediately I ended up working in the church and I've been planted in Mavuno Church for 16 years, over 16 years. Let me tell you, something changed. My perception changed. I made an intentional decision after that to be planted. And that's the main scripture I want us to read to get today. It's from Psalms 92, 12 to 25. Uh, and let's read it together. This is what it says. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they will still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Church, I wanna tell you this uh, today. There is a difference between going to church and being planted. There's a difference between going to church and being planted. God is calling us to be planted in the house of, the go of God, rooted in Christ and flourishing as part of the church. You guys, so there's something, church isn't the same thing as uh, being planted. Are you guys hearing me? Being available to go to church is not the same thing as being planted. There's a real difference and you can hear it in the way we as a community talk about church. So for example, you wake up on Sunday morning and you might be saying, hey, what are, are we going to church today? You know, I'm thinking, we're kind of busy. Uh, there's a lot going on in my life today. Or oh, there's that game, there's Formula One in the morning. I'm not going to church. You get, I'm kind of tired. Maybe we could go to that restaurant that we like. You know, the one where the branch is really good. What do you think? Do you want to go to church today? When you're planted, you will never say, are we going to church today? Because church is not a destination. Church is who you are. Attending worship is never really a question because we are the church. You never really ask your family, listen, are we going to eat today? Do you think we ought to eat? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not thinking about it. You don't ask yourself, do you want to breathe oxygen? <laughs> are you in the mood for oxygen today? Breathing is who we are. We do it every day. Going to church is never really a question because we are the church. But what does the word church actually mean? It's a, it's a Greek word, ecclesia. Ecclesia means a gathering of people, an assembly of people. And over time, it was an assembly of Christians who came together to worship uh, and share their faith together. But the word ecclesia is a compound word. So that means it it's, comes out of putting two words together. Ek means out and ecclesia, which comes from the word kaleo, which means uh, called. So ecclesia literally means the called out ones. In other words, we gather together to hear the word of God and then to use our gifts together, strengthened by the gathering. We are the church. We are called out into the world. The church doesn't exist for us. As a church, we exist for the world. Like I'm talking to you, you exist for the world. There's a massive difference between going to a building and then being plugged into a calling and a movement and a mission. Ephesians uh, 2.10, and it, it, it says that God has already planned for us to do great things. He already planned for you to do great things for the kingdom. He wants you to partner with him. When you join a church, you're plugging into a movement, into a calling, into a mission. When you are planted in the house of God, it means you're investing the work, in the work that God is already doing in you and in the church. It means developing relationships with Christians, praying for them, letting them pray for you, recognizing that God has given you gifts to bless his church, to bless the community that God has given you. When church is a destination, when you view church as a product, you limit what God is doing in you. Listen, it's not a destination to attend. It's an identity that you embrace. I'm calling you to embrace your identity today. I want you to say with full confidence, I am part of the family of God. I am planted in the house of God. You know what? I don't think the devil minds if you don't go to church. In fact, the devil wants you to keep you offended. The devil wants you to keep you in the space of anger and resentment against leaders. He wants to keep you isolated. The only one who wants you to think you shouldn't be planted is your spiritual enemy. He wants you to be isolated because when you're isolated, you're vulnerable. There's a tree that I love known as the redwood tree. I want to see it one day in my life. It's one of the tallest trees in the world. It grows to over 3,000 feet tall. And, and then uh, the root systems of that tree only extend to 6 to 12 feet uh, below the ground. It's kind of uh, upside down. 
Because what this tree does is that it extends its root system 50 feet or more, um, so flat this way. And what happens is the roots of each tree, because they grow hundreds of them together, they intertwine. And so what happens is you find strength when you're connected together. So these are the trees in the world that no matter what storm, no matter what flood, these trees survive. That's why they become the, the highest growing trees in the world. And so they are able to withstand so much. And then within those trees, they support a, a whole community. They support animals, livelihood, they support one another, they build one another. You wanna grow tall, be planted in a community. We need the family of God. I need you and you need me. We are stronger together. We are blessed and encouraged because our roots support each other. We need one another. When you're isolated, you are vulnerable to the enemy. When you let offense sit in that place, you let the enemy take over and limit you from growing to your highest and fullest potential in Christ. But when you're planted in the house of the Lord, you're, plant, you're part of a great forest that supports you. The passage we read today said, when you are planted, you flourish like the cedar tree. You remain evergreen and you produce fruit. The palm tree is a unique tree because it is the only tree in nature that gets more and more fruitful with each passing year. Did you hear what I said? It doesn't peak after 30 years and then it diminishes uh, and doesn't grow more fruitful. It grows more fruitful with each and every passing year. Every year it produces a greater crop of fruit than the previous one. I'm like, what? I want that narrative over my life. The narrative for us as believers is that every year we should be producing more and more fruit. The palm tree gets richer and fuller with each passing week, each passing month, each passing year, each passing decade. It's flourishing, bringing forth fruit even in its old age, getting ever green and even more flourishing, thriving, not just surviving. This is what God's intention for you is, that as you become older in this community, you're becoming even more green. You're supporting more life. You're bearing more fruit. You're multiplying what God has in store for you. Now, because of offense, which is not the will of God, we end up on survival mode. This is not God's will for you. Many of us have accepted that narrative that says, I, don't I love God, but I don't need to be in church. I don't love his church. That is the enemy at work in your life. This is why letting go is so important. This is why healing must come to us in our, ch our churches, because you are made to flourish. You're made to produce fruit. You're made to stand and be fearless. For you to experience this fundamentally, by the way, and primarily, there are some things that need to be at play. There's a discipline that needs to be at play in your life. The psalmist says in verse 13, those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God, not those who drop in occasionally into the house of the Lord or come when it's convenient to them or if I can fit into my schedule, or if the price of gas is reasonable, then I'll go. Or if the weather is nice, then I'll go. The person who is planted is the one who flourishes. Planted in the Hebrew means planted. Those who are rooted and grounded in the word of God are the ones who will flourish. There are certain practices that need to be at play for you to flourish. And you need to ask yourself, what are those practices? Is it prayer? Is it devotions? Is it tithing? Being part of a DG? Attending family night? There are so many things for you to get planted, for you to flourish and be evergreen. So I want you to remember the two points. I want you to have kingdom perspective. No human, no demon can get you out of the will of God. Only God holds your test destiny. Now that said, man cannot live in toxic environments indefinitely. Maybe some of you are uh, in a situation when you need to let go of offense towards somebody in the church or even a church at large, but usually it's someone. Now, I know you're listening to me and you're saying, Pastor Angie, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they said to me, what that man of God said to me. I'm telling you this, I know. I don't even know what they said. But I want you to, I want you to consider what I'm saying. Would you be willing to go up to that person in your church especially if you feel led to still be a part of that community and release forgiveness. Maybe you can do it without having to go up to them, but if you want to continue being there, go up to them and say, can, would you consider 
getting to that place where you say, I'll go up to that person, I'll bless them, and I'll, and I'll ask for God to reconcile us. Now, we're going to talk a lot about this in the next few weeks. Um, so I just want you to consider it right now as we get into the space of reconciliation. But let me tell you something. If you feel led by God to leave the church that caused you pain, and suffering, even here at Mavuno Church. If you have felt led to leave this church, I want to ask you to have courage and boldness to leave without offense or without causing offense. What does that mean? It means you take the scripture I read at the beginning to heart. God loves his sheep. He doesn't want you to cause more offense to his church, his body, his family. The other thing he's, uh, God is about is about reconciliation. So would you consider meeting, meeting your leader or pastor and alert them that you feel led to leave? If you're able to tell them why that's a good thing, release forgiveness to the leader, then ask them to bless you. Why am I saying this? It is a win for the kingdom for you to be planted. Whether it is here at Mavuno Church or at another church, what we want you to do is be planted. Do not go to another church and become a consumer or a pew warmer. You cannot have been a part of Mavuno Church for over three years and still sit in the pews and listen to sermons. God has called you to be planted and to flourish. And God has called you to establish great things for Him. God has called you to be the salt and the light. So when people come to me and guys have come to me and told me, Pastor Andrew, I feel led to leave. Imagine I bless them and then I tell them, you cannot go to that church and sit in the pews be planted. It is a win for the kingdom. That's why we must have kingdom perspective. If a church is planted, if another church is birthed, it is a win for the kingdom. Why would I want to hold you here? We want to bless you to be everything that God wants you to be. My second point is be planted. It's actually the main point. Be planted. The how is the details. There are many opportunities for you to be planted here at Mavuno. Don't just sit in the pews or watch this online service and not engage. Join the 4.30 a.m. prayers because this is how your roots grow deep. This is how you produce fruit over and over. The only way, let me tell you, to produce fruit in the kingdom of God is through prayer. So join our 4.30 a.m. prayers. Join one of the campus prayers uh, this week. Serve at your campus. Attend family night this week and engage. Join a DG. Begin to tithe to the space that feeds you spiritually. What I'm asking you to do is be planted. Produce fruit in the season that God has called you to. Amen, church. I'm excited because breakthrough is coming to the house. I'm excited because healing is coming to you who has been hurt by church. Would you allow me to pray for you as I bring this message to a close? Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much because church is your divine idea. I thank you so much because healing and reconciliation is part of your plan. I thank you because you called us, your desire for us to, is to be planted and to thrive and to flourish. Father, I confess, we confess, as people who have held on first offense against the church, We've made it about individuals and personalities and we've let the devil limit our experience of you, limit our impact in the kingdom. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for making it about others. Forgive us, Lord. Today, Father, I release forgiveness to those who have not represented you well. I release forgiveness to those that have been hurt. I commit them to you. I pray that your hand would walk into their stories and bring healing and transformation and blessing and deliverance. Father, give us kingdom perspective. Father, today we commit to be planted. We commit to grow. We commit to serve you. We commit to produce food. And as I make this request, I wait with expectation for your spirit to enter every household, every car, every business, every individual hearing this conversation. May their hearts be changed. May they be planted and have impact in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.